Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Shalom, shalom. Israel, thanks to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. This is Elder Donnie here, the host for the evening. This edition of the Spirit Truth on Blog Talk Radio. Hallelujah. Where we contend for the faith. Hallelujah. Bless you all, Israel. Glory to the King. Let me know how I'm coming in in your area. Hallelujah. There, hallelujah. I that you can hear me just fine. My chat is just fuzzy. It's got to fix Hallelujah. So long, so long. Glory to the King. Glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessing to you all, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Not sure, thanks what it is. Hallelujah. However, I'm going to go forth and uh, with the show for the evening. Glory to the King. I want to greet you all, saints. Hallelujah. Much better. Thank you, Brother Scott. I appreciate you all. Brother Scott, uh, Brother Steve there, uh, Brother Mike, glory to the King. Hallelujah. Thank you all, saints. Greatly appreciate you. Brother Ugly there. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Bless Yahweh. But to saints, to all the saints that are scattered abroad, the beloved of Yah, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from Yahweh, our Father, and Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Blessings to you all, saints. Hallelujah. And saints always like to give praise and honor to the Most High Yah through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. For without them, we can do nothing. Hallelujah. And I want to give honor unto our beloved pastor, Pastor Charles Dow Jr., and to all the pastors uh, here in Israel, and to Teacher McKnight, all of the elders, and all of the heads of the assemblies. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And I want to say, you know, saints, it's, a, it's an honor. It truly is an honor to be here before you this evening. And thank you for joining me. Hallelujah. And uh, we're going to just give praise to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. We see what, what Yah is doing with us in this hour. And um, it's, just, it's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. And I'm just so thankful for it. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. And as you know, saints, I like to start out with Psalms 19, 7 through 11 here. Glory to the King. I pray that y'all all are doing well and that you all are encouraged. Hallelujah. On this first day of the week as we go forward. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Psalms 19, starting at verse 7, it says, The law of Yahweh is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahweh is sure, making wise the simple. The statues of Yahweh are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of Yahweh is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahweh is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of Yahweh are true and righteous all together. More to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Hallelujah. So that is, uh, it truly is something to be uh, thankful for and, and, and to really look forward to. Uh, he, he, he has our back, you know what I mean? Thanks. As long as we are obedient, as long as we line up with. Uh, his laws, with his line of thinking, hallelujah, we will be just fine. Glory to the King. But we got to uh, you know, purpose it in our heart and put it in our hearts to uphold his laws, to uphold his judgments, to uphold, you know, all that he set before us, you know, the examples that we see. Uh, we need to do all these things in holy and high regard, hallelujah, because it is our life, hallelujah. 
we are not without instructions. We are not just wandering as, as vagabonds or, you know, to and fro. Uh, you know what I mean? We have roots. And they need to be rooted and grounded in the law of Yahweh. Hallelujah. Nothing else in this world is concrete. Nothing else is, is, is uh, solid. But that word of Yah it is truly solid. It is our life line. And uh, we're just grateful for it. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful that we are gaining greater comprehension in this late, late hour. When all wickedness is, is just at an all-time high all around us. But Yah is really preserved. He has preserved us. His remnant. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful for it. Glory to the King. Psalms 119, 66 through 69 says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Hallelujah. So that's the king right there, David. Hallelujah. So nothing's going to stop him. Nothing is going to uh, change his heart. Hallelujah from following Yahweh. And that's how we need to be, you know, giving unto him with our whole heart. Our, our mind, our will, and our emotions. You know, all too, all too often we like to hold on to that old man or hold on to a little piece of, of that old fallen nature. Which it only, you know, can deteriorate and, and bring about uh, that, that sickness and that cancerous uh, mind. Hallelujah. That we, we that we're striving, that we need to be striving, and should be striving to to get our, to get rid of and rid ourselves of it. It's corrupt, it's uh, defiled, and it is it does nothing but ruin our perception. It, it, it hinders our walk. So that's what we need to be actively doing, saying to the Most High God, and purging. Hallelujah. But I just want to ask y'all, you know, once again, how's everybody doing? I, I see Hallelujah. I see glory to the King. I see. So it looks like the saints are really encouraged out there. And that's a good thing. It really truly is a good thing. And I want to ask you, though, how do you take, you know, when you hear a message uh, such as we heard yesterday, if you were truly engaged, if you truly gave over your, your mind and your heart to hearing the voice of Yah, how does that make you feel? What does that do for you? Because he really poured it out. I mean, he didn't leave no route, no, no way for any of us to escape. We have to really deal with self. All right, saints? And so there's not going to be, you know, no time, no, no, no wiggle room for you to, you know, to uh, make all these excuses anymore and to uh, really truly deny uh, the truth or, you know what I mean, and hold on to that old nature. You got to let go, saints. Got to let go. Got to let go. It's all about restoration. It's all about renewing. Hallelujah. In this, in this last hour. But saints, I uh, hope that you all are thankful as well. Just thankful that you had the opportunity to see another day. Hallelujah. And another opportunity for repentance. Take advantage of this day. You cannot get it back once it is gone. Hallelujah. So, glory to the King. But I praise y'all for the Torah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to read to you, saints, um, some words. Uh, uh, from Pastor Dahl, quote from him from yesterday uh, as he began Sabbath. You know, and it really resonated with my heart. I um, just wanted to uh, come here and, and, and read them again to you just to bring it back to your memory. Hallelujah. And I'll start and it says, The Torah is more than words on a page. It is, it is, to the, it is the way of life for all of us. And when we agree with what is written in the Torah and bring about a performance in our lives, that's when we experience the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So that's all predicated upon us, saints, being in agreement. You hear that? We have to be in agreement with Yah, with His words. Hallelujah. With His Torah. 
It's already set, etched in stone. I mean, it's forever settled in heaven. There's nothing we can do to ever try to change it or, or, or try to bypass it. No, nah, it's already set for us. We need to get with the program. That's what we need to do. All right, and I'm going to continue on. And it says, I'll read the last part again. It says, um, Start again. It says the Torah is more than words on a page. It is the it is the way of life for all of us. And when we agree with what is written in the Torah, and we bring about a performance in our lives, that's when we experience the fruit of the Spirit. You can gauge when you're when you're out of the will of Yah, and you can tell when you're transgressing. Or when you're in disobedience, when you do not exhibit as well as, as well as the fruit of the Spirit that should be operating in your lives. No matter how many times you try to justify, no matter how many times you try to rationalize, you are ultimately in charge of creating a healthy environment Starting first with you, your physical body, and health, and a healthy mindset. Excuse me. And it's impossible to keep a healthy environment and mindset when your mind is corrupt. Hallelujah. And those are really some sound words, hallelujah, by our, our beloved pastor. And that's just the truth, you know what I mean, saints? And, that, and that's what we're going to be talking about, you know, because Christ... Uh, He's not coming back for a defiled bride. You know what I mean? A corrupt bride. It's not happening. It is not happening. And so that's what we need to be doing now, taking that opportunity, the time that we have, taking advantage of each day to get things right in our lives. And you know what? This is it, it is all predicated upon ourselves. We have to be the ones to be proactive. We have to be the ones to do. All right? I, I remember Pastor Sanders in a, in a message uh a while back, you know, he said that this walk, you know, you cannot be lazy in this walk. All right? You can't do it. Absolutely not. Because it requires, it requires for you to do, to perform, to take action. And that's what we need to all be doing, taking action. Sure, you're going to suffer some loss. Sure, you're going to have to sacrifice beyond what you've ever uh, sacrificed before. And I know it for sure. That this walk and, and being in this state, for me personally, you know what I mean, saints? I've, I've really had to, it really feels like I'm earning something or, or, or working towards something. This is not being given to me. Hallelujah. And neither is it going to be given to you. And you need to get that in your mind. To get that entitlement mentality. Because that doesn't work with y'all. Hallelujah. We all are going to be proved. We all are going to be tested and tried. Hallelujah. And so it's up to, to us what we're going to do, hallelujah, when we face with trials and such. Glory to the King. But Yah is not leaving us, saints, without any, um, you know, just leaving us out there. He, he, that's why the Comforter is there, hallelujah, to lead us and teach us and to guide us in all things. Hallelujah. That's why we need to walk closely with the Father, with the, with the Most High, hallelujah, and spend that time and really, really give all and be honest with ourselves. Hallelujah. But as I was saying, uh, as I read, one thing, you know, uh, he mentioned that, Pastor mentioned that a healthy environment and mindset, it, it can only uh, happen when, um, uh, well, if it's unhealthy, it can bring about a corrupt uh, state of mind. And so I looked up that word corrupt, all right, and it, and it, it, was taught, and it says here in the Hebrew, 7843, to destroy, corrupt, to go to ruin, decay. To be marred, be spoiled, be corrupted, be corrupt, be injured, be ruined, be rotted, to spoil, ruin, to pervert, corrupt, deal corruptly, to spoil, ruin, destroy, to pervert, corrupt, destroyer, spoiled, and ruined. So, you know, I mean, from judging from all of that, I mean, that's... That's not a good mind to have, and, and it truly is not. How can you really serve the Father with that type of thinking and that type of all of that clutter? 
you're going to be thinking and, and functioning after another spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to look at Deuteronomy 31 to 29. It says, For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves. And this is Moshe speaking, hallelujah, to the children of Israel. And he says, And turn aside from the way which I have commanded you, and evil will befall you in the latter days. Because you will do evil in the sight of Yahweh to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands. So this is already prophesied what would happen with Israel. And so since we already know, we see, um, we see what our angels did. Of course, we see that. The exact people that he spoke this to, the, uh, the exact ones who actually fulfilled this. And some of those who went, the, the, you know, after them. So what, what's going to be our end, saints of the Most High? Having known all of this, what are we going to do? Are we going to follow them same mistakes? What are we going to do, honestly, as a people, as a whole? And this got to be personal to you. Of course we know that Messiah said he's, he's coming back for a bride without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And we know he's going to have that. But this needs to be focused on you individually. Are you going to make it? And that's what the question needs to be. Will I make it? Will I be in that number? You know, you need to be concerned about that. We don't take these things seriously enough to what we reverence, you know, the most high. We don't reverence his authority enough. Not at all. Because, see, just as Moses was speaking to those people, they probably didn't think much of it. Looking at the man and thinking, oh, here you go again, you know. Just as a lot of you do today, oh, here you go again. You know, there go the pastors and, the, and, and all of them, they just saying all that again. You know, not taking it to heart. But Yah knows exactly what's in your heart. He knows the condition of your heart. So what will your end be? Don't be counted among these, uh, saints and most high, yeah? we, We're giving too much. We are. Hallelujah. But we see clearly the condition uh, of many saints uh, according to the world, you know, the heathen out there. We see their condition. You know, we see these people that are confused in their mind and ruined in every aspect of their lives. They categorize themselves, you know, everything from transgender, transhuman, trans species, and, and so on. I mean, they got trans pretty much everything, anything you want to. Be uh, you can be it, all right. And we can see this clearly, but we cannot see ourselves spiritually. So now that, so what title is given to us? That's the question. What title? What what are we given? Because we portray this image of holiness through our outer adorning, you know, through our beautiful garments, and and we're arrayed so beautifully and so, uh, um, so so just so beautiful and wonderfully. But our minds, saints, our mind, our minds are still operating as heathens. So sure, you can have on your, your beautiful garments, your Hebrew garments, you got your, your TTs, you got, you know what I mean, your fringes and your cord of blue. But what was really good, what's, what's, what's really inside that heart, though? What's really going on there? So what is your title? But you know what, saints? You know, the most high, y'all will see it not as men's, man see it. You know, we can really fool each other. We can fool one another, you know, with our outer appearance, even our countenance and, and all such things. But man, you know, the man looking on the outward appearance, but y'all look it on the heart. You know? Glory to the king. So we ain't fooling nobody, not at all. We got to get down to the heart of the matter. We got to get down to the root of the problem. What's really going on? You know, when I was going over all of this, and it had me thinking um, about, you know, Pastor, Pastor mentioned this a while back, about cognitive dissonance, all right? And, and it came back to my mind. I'm going to read it to you, the um, definition that I found for it. All right, and it says in philosophy, cognitive dissonance is the mental stress or discomfort experienced by an individual who holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values at the same time. 
These are he performs an action that is con contradictory to one or more beliefs, ideas, or values, or is confronted by new information that conflicts with existing beliefs, ideas, or values. And so we know that to be true just even in our own selves. If we just look at ourselves and look at how, you know, we come from, we spent the majority of our lives living in darkness and living in what we thought was the truth, only to come into the knowledge of the, the actual truth of the Most High Yah. And there's a conflict that goes on there. You know what I mean? There's a conflict. And this guy here, Leon Fessing, Fessing, Fessinger's theory of cognitive dissonance focuses on how humans strive for internal consistency. An individual who experiences inconsistency tends to become psychologically uncomfortable and is motivated to try to reduce this dissonance as well as actively avoid situations and information likely to increase it. So basically, if, if, if ever uh, an individual comes in, like, like I just mentioned, into the knowledge of truth, for example, you know, he tries to do his best to try not to allow this new truth or this new way of thinking to come in and affect what, what is always, what's already been there and already put into the mind and what he grew up knowing and, and thinking and doing and saying. He does everything possible to, to try to not have that disturbed. And that's just natural function. That's according to what this guy is saying. All right, for example, if we look at the whole idea of polygyny and uh, multiple wives, all right? You know, growing up, you know, many of us, for the most part, this wasn't something that was spoke about. This wasn't something that was uh, highly esteemed or, or even, you know, no one, no one talked about it because it was always thought of as being, you know, that's not, that's not right. Man should have one woman, all right? Should be married to only one, all right? And so that's the way, you know, a lot of us grew up. And so when we come into this truth, and then we see, hey, you know, y'all really doesn't have an issue with this. You don't have a problem with this. So now we gotta, we 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 have the task in front of us. We gotta make the decision. We gotta get on board with this thing, and dispel all of the lies that we were taught, and all of the thinking from before. Sure, it rocked many people, and it still is rocking many people's world, and it's disturbing that comfort zone which man is so used to used to all right and just using that for an example another example as you look at you know pastor brought it out on 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 sabbath how in judgment you know uh, this couple was given uh instructions you know judgment was settled and they were given uh, instructions on what to do they chose not to do it for whatever reason you know hey they may have been too difficult for them to even try to you know get that through their heads be away from each other for a whole year and so what, what does man normally do? Man goes and do what he wants to do, what, what's most comfortable, what he feels is the right thing to do. He doesn't like any interruption or any inconsistencies in his thinking. And that's a bad state, thanks to the Most High. That is very bad because what it is is not only you're not doing, you know, uh, any injustice or disrespect unto man. This is Yah's judgment. And that's what people don't really realize. Everything that's set up before us, before time, this is all y'all's doing. It's not, not none, none of us have nothing to do with it. We need to get with it or kick the traces. That's it. And that's what we need to get out of that comfort zone. None of this is about us. None of it. We got to be active in purging our minds and our thoughts. If our thoughts don't line up with y'all, hey, they got to be thrown out. And we got to do what we need to do in order to get in line. Hallelujah. If it caused pain, hey, it's gonna cause some pain. If it caused some 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 uh, you know, discomfort or whatever the case is, deal with it. Hallelujah. It's only gonna build you up, and make you stronger. Hallelujah. But as we see, I'll give you another example in the natural sense. All right. If uh, when people smoke, all right, that's the behavior, and they know that smoking causes cancer. That's the cogn cognition. All right. I'm gonna go on to read that uh, Tessinger's. 1957 
cognitive dissonance theory suggests that we have an inner drive to hold all our attitudes and beliefs in harmony and avoid disharmony. So basically we refuse to really change our mind in essence. Attitudes may change because of factors within the person. An important factor here is the principle of cognitive consistency. The focus of Fessinger's 1957 theory of cognitive dissonance, this theory starts from the idea that we seek consistency in our beliefs and attitudes in any situation where two significations are inconsistent. All right, he goes on to suppose that cognitive dissonance theory, which states that a powerful motive to, ma to maintain cognitive consistency gives, can give rise or irrational and sometimes maleficent behavior. According to Fessinger, we hold many cognitions about the world and ourselves when they clash. A discrepancy is evoked, resulting in a state of tension known as cognitive dissonance. As the experience of dissonance is unpleasant, we are motivated to reduce or eliminate it and achieve consonance, which means agreement. So we want everything to be smooth. We don't want no interruptions. We want to continue to go on the way we've always done things. Hallelujah. And we can see things. That's the, the issue we have. Uh, and, and many who have gone, who was here with us, who are no longer here, had the same way of thinking. They refused to change refuse to change their mind hallelujah so we must change and we must submit and as we can see Yah is really calling for all in Israel in this time frame he really is and you know what saints you're not going to be putting up with that um, any type of rebellion from us whatsoever at all we got to conform we have to renew our minds alright but we must submit and we must face uh, these things that are going on with us and we got to deal with it head on the burden of proof is on us thanks the most high yeah i'm gonna read something to you here this is from the deliverance manual page uh, 77 it says give me one second here hallelujah this is page 77 it says what is grief grief is, grief is sorrow Heavy, grievous, sad, intense suffering caused by emotions due to loss, misfortune, injury, evil, regret, or suffering. To be morbid, to suffer calamity, failure, distress, or lament. Emotions. Grief causes a breakdown in emotional control. Emotions will fluctuate wildly. Will. Listen to this. You are unable to do what you see you should do or need to do. You see, you hear that? The body. Doctors tell us that after many years of study, those who are bitter and grief or unforgiveness create a climate in the body where cancer, arthritis, and ulcers thrive. Our body chemistry and functions are out of order due to the stress created by grief, bitterness, and unforgiveness. The mind. The mind should be under control by the person's spirit, which should be under the direction of the Holy Spirit. We tend to think of our mind as the supreme part of us, but it is not. We are a spirit that has a soul and lives in a body. All right? And it goes on to say, just as we do not let our hands or feet do their own thing, neither, neither do we let our mind accept every thought coming into it. A mind can receive more than one thought at a time. From more than one source. We hear from Yah and Satan at the same time. We should examine every thought that comes into our mind. If it does not pass a biblical inspection, we should reject it. If it lines up with the Bible, we pray for wisdom and act on the wisdom Yah gives. Many thoughts coming through our minds are not our own but are sent out by evil spirits to snag us. If we accept them and think back with them, we can be led into depression, sin, etc. 
So we know this, you know, saints. We hear this all the time, you know, about dealing with thoughts and, you know, how to how to differentiate whether it's Satan or whether it's you know the Most High speaking in these um, in these in these instances. Who are we hearing from? But many thoughts coming into your mind are not your own, but are sent to entice you. If we accept them and act on them, we can be led into sin in mind or in body. Hallelujah. So you can uh, equate that to any situation you go through, any circumstance uh, in your life. Hallelujah. So we, we must know. Hallelujah. And we must make the right choices and decisions. I'm going to read something again from the book of Ecclesiastes. Sarah. The Apocrypha here. And it's Sarah 2. Chapter 2. Son of verse 2. It says, Set thy heart aright. And constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at the last end. Alright, I'm going to skip over to the next chapter, chapter 3. Please ask chapter 3, starting at verse 26. It says, A stubborn heart shall fare evil at the last. And he that loveth danger shall perish therein. An obstinate heart shall be laden with sorrows. And a wicked man shall heap sin upon sin. In the punishment of the proud there is no remedy. For the plant of wickedness had taken root in him. The heart of the prudent will understand a parable, and an attentive ear is the desire of a wise man. Water will quench a flaming fire, and alms make it an atonement for sins. And he that would quit it good, good turns is mindful of that which may come hereafter, and when he falleth, he shall find a stay. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. So it pays, thanks. It really truly pays for us. Hallelujah. To line up with Yah. Hallelujah. No matter what it takes. Uh, not not kicking, not refusing to change our opinion, our position, or our chosen course. You know, despite all of the, the attempts that we get that's persuading us, you know, week in and week out. That's persuading us, you know, to do what's right, to, to, to follow Yah. Hallelujah. Deny ourselves in all of this. One more thing I'm going to read from the Sirach while I'm here. In 22. All right, Sirach 22. Son of verse 16. It says, As timber girt, and bound together in a building. A building cannot be loosed with sh shaking. So the heart that is established by advised counsel shall fear at no time. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. He that pricketh the eyes will make tears to fall, and he that pricketh the heart making it to show her knowledge. Hallelujah. So, glory to the King. We better soften our hearts. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I'm going to read uh, Luke here. Luke 13, starting verse 6. And it says, He spake also this parable, talking about Messiah. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Master, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear 
fruit. Well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. Tell you what, saints, we better we better really uh, take heed, hallelujah, to a lot of warnings, to a lot of instructions that go forth, um, especially what's going on now, how y'all is really trying to get us, hallelujah, the people, we're trying to get us ready, all right, washing us through that word. See, we make the mistake of, of just thinking, you know, just as we did back in Christianity that, you know, we can still sin and we can live a life as we want to. And, and you know, we got forgiveness. We can just always ask, ask God for yeah, forgiveness and, and we'll be all right. Well, we better be careful. You know, it even spoken in the book of Genesis that y'all will not, all, his spirit will not always strive with man. Hallelujah. You better be careful and not take it for granted. You know, he's not going to continue to plead with us and, and, and to, uh, to, to, to deal with us in that manner if we were not obedient. Hallelujah. So we got to make a change, and that change got to come from, uh, happen within our mind, first and foremost. Glory to the King. But um, I'll tell you what, man. You, when you sit in there and you hear, you know, the words that we heard on Sabbath, man, it really just, it really pricks that heart. It really gets down, you know, to the depths of, of the soul. Hallelujah. And, and it really causes you to think. You know, and, and, and you got to be honest with yourself. Really got to be honest with self. Hallelujah. And uh, come to terms with, you know, whatever it is you're dealing with. Glory to King. That's what it's all about, Saint the Most High. Yeah. We don't do this to uh, and, and talk with you and try to encourage you and, and, and cry out for you to repent just for it to be words that are said. You know what I mean? To, 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 to entertain you or, you know, to make you feel like you're doing right by showing up for Sabbath. You know, no, nah, it's more than that. It takes some passion and it takes love and it takes, you know, love for the most high. Yeah. And you in turn need to take that and be appreciative of it and see what Yah is doing and what he's trying to do in your life. Glory to the king. But this is this is not Christianity. This is not the world. And so our, our minds really have to be changed. Right? They really have to be changed. Um, and we need to do whatever we need to do. You cannot say it. That this word is not being made plain unto you. The Holy Spirit is there to lead and guide you. Whatever level that you're on. And though I know it seems like, you know, hey, they just say the same old things. There's never nothing good. It's just always this. Now, nah, you know why, saints? Because just as I'm speaking, just as pastors speak, just as the other elders speak, and teachers as they speak, the other pastors, there are still folk that call themselves Israel. But they are still functioning after this world. They have not truly committed in their hearts. They are not truly submitted as they should be. And I don't need to go down on this calling out all of the sins and all of the problems and issues. You know exactly what it is that, that's going on with you personally. Hallelujah. That you need to work on. Thinking, oh, I'm going to just deal with it another time or, or when, it, when it's most convenient. No, you're going to find yourself with a reprobate mind. You're going to find yourself without. Although you may be here, but you will not fully really be here in the spirit. You will not be here in your mind. So we better be careful and, and watch and, and not take it for granted, you know, that Yah and thinking he's going to always deal with us and always have pity and mercy upon us. It's the time now, thanks. It's the time now to get it right. It's the time now to uh, work out any kinks, you know. If you have issues, you have things you don't comprehend well, or whatever the case is. That's why our people are set up, leaders are set up, and uh, even your brothers and sisters are set up there to help you, to guide you. To, to, you know what I mean? There is help. You need to be uh, have enough in you and want to change to try to get some help or to speak out, not being prideful. And worrying if, you know, folks are going to look at you a certain way because you disclosed some information. Nah, man, we all need help. We all got issues and things that we're dealing with. So don't even feel that way. You can't get help. But it's, it's all about you if you want it. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Um, let's see what I'll do here. I'm going to take a break. Thanks. For, just real quick here. Uh, ministry break. I'll come back. Talk to you a little bit more. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Elder Donnie here. On Straightway Truth here on Blog Talk Radio. Hallelujah. Glory to the King.
take a quick ministry break. Thanks. Shalom. This is Sister Wenda. I hope that all of you are enjoying the broadcast that you're listening to right now. We appreciate each and every last one of you, our faithful listeners and supporters of the Straightway Truth radio broadcast. We try to make sure that we do our due diligence and do our best to ensure that you have the best broadcast as well as the truth coming to you in the hour that we're living in right now. If you would like to help us in this endeavor, your offering will be greatly appreciated in the work of the Ministry of the Most High Yah. Our mailing address for your gift Offering or letter of support is Charles Dowell Jr. That's Charles Dowell Jr. And Dowell is spelled D O W E L L. 506 Ellington Drive. Ellington is spelled E L L I N G T O N. P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee. And Lafayette is spelled L-A-F-A-Y-E-T-T-E-37083. Again, our mailing address is Charles Dowell, Jr., 506 Ellington Drive, P.O. Box 32, Lafayette, Tennessee, 37083. If you would like to contact us by way of phone, the country code is 1, area code 615-688-3025. That's 1-615-688-3025. You may leave a message there and, be the Father's will, we will do whatever we can to try to return your message. It is our hope and our prayer that as you continue to listen to the Straightway Truth Ministry, and as you apply the teachings of this ministry, that you are finding peace and growth within you, your family, and life as well. Please tell others, so that the truth may also have an impact and touch others' lives, so that they may enjoy the benefits of the truth of Jesus Christ, just like we all are. Shalom, the King is coming! All the things that I would do, feel like I couldn't. 
things that I should do Feels like I shouldn't Human nature has to Nature's gotta kill This place All the things that I would do Why I feel like that I couldn't All the things that I should do Man, why I feel like that I shouldn't I don't really understand it though But if I suppose explain the best That human nature got to do nature That's why I gotta kill this flesh I have to say goodbye to you So I Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, saints, that song is encouraging, though, I tell you, because that flesh, it does try to rise up. Hallelujah. That old nature. Hallelujah. But guess what? It's up to us, saints. Hallelujah. To fight against that. Walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. I'm going to go on, saints. Um, if anybody's just joining us, Elder Donnie here. Glory to the King. We're well, content for the faith here. And no doubt, it's a pleasure to have you all. Glad that you all are able to join me this evening. All right, what I'm going to do um, for this portion of the broadcast, I'm going to switch gears a little bit, and then I'll come back right back to what we was talking about. But, you know, Pastor was speaking to us uh, a couple of Sabbaths ago, and he, you know, brought up a um, particular person. Um, he spoke about Nat Turner and asked us that we know, you know, of him. And he suggested that we go and learn of him or read up about him if we didn't quite know uh, much about him. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and read just a quick bio of him, all right, saints, so just so we have an idea of this, who this, this person is. And this is Nat Turner. <clears throat> Give me one second here, saints. I had a whole bunch of windows open here. All right. All right, I'm going to read this to you. This is uh, it's Nat Turner here. Give me one second. All right, and it says Nat Turner was a leader of a violent slave rebellion in Southampton County, Virginia, in 1831. And this is Nat Turner, born into slavery on October 2nd, 1800, on a Southampton County plantation, became a preacher who claimed he had been chosen by God to lead slaves from bondage. On August 21st, 1831, he led a violent insurrection he hid for six weeks, but was eventually caught and later hanged. The incident ended the emancipation movement in that region and led to even harsher laws against slaves. Born on October 2, 1800, in Southampton County, Virginia, Nat Turner made history as the leader of one of the bloodiest slave revolts in America. He was born on the Virginia plantation of Benjamin Turner, who allowed him to be instructed in reading, writing, and religion. His mother was named Nancy 
but nothing is known about his fam his father. As a small child, Turner was thought to have some special talent because he could describe things that happened before he was even born. Some even remarked that he surely would be a prophet. According to his later confession, his mother and grandmother told Turner that he was intended for some great purpose. Turner was deeply religious and spent much of his time reading the Bible, praying and fasting. Over the years, Turner worked on a number of different plantations. He ran away from Samuel Turner, his former owner's brother, in 1821. After 30 days hiding in the woods, Turner came back to Turner's plantation after he received what he believed to be a sign from God. After Samuel Turner's death, Nat Turner became the slave of Thomas Moore and then the property of his widow. When she married John Travis, Nat Turner went to work on Travis's lands. Believing in signs and hearing divine voices, Turner had a vision in 1825 of a bloody conflict between black and white spirits. Three years later, he had what he believed to be another message from God. In his later confession, Turner explained, The spirit instantly appeared to me and said, The serpent was loosened, and Christ had laid down the yoke he had borne for the sins of men, and that I should take it on and fight against the serpent. Turner would receive another sign to tell him when to fight. But this latest message meant I should arise and prepare myself and slay my enemies with their own weapons. Turner took a solar eclipse that occurred in February 1831 as a signal that the time to rise up had come. He recruited several other slaves to join him in his cause. On August 21st, 1831, Turner and his supporters began their revolt against white slave owners with the killing the Travis with killing the Travis family. Turner gathered more supporters, growing to a group of up to forty or fifty slaves. As he and his men continued their murder spree through the country through the county, they were able to secure arms and horses from those they killed. Most sources say that about 55 white men, women, and children died during Turner's rebellion. Initially, Turner had planned to reach the county seat of Jerusalem and take over the armory there. But he and his men were foiled in this plan. They faced off against a group of armed white men at a plantation near Jerusalem. And the conflict soon dissolved into chaos. Turner himself fled into the woods. While Turner hid away, white mobs took their re revenge on the blacks of, of Southampton County. And this is in Virginia, y'all, that he's speaking of. Estimates range from approximately 100 to 200 African Americans were killed after the rebellion. Turner was eventually captured on October 30th 1831, he was represented by lawyer Thomas R. Gray, who wrote down Turner's confession. Turner pleaded not guilty during his trial, believing that his rebellion was the work of God. He was sentenced to death by hanging, and this sentence was carried out on November 11, 1831. Many of his co-conspirators met the same fate as Turner, so they as well were hanged. The incident put fear in the heart of Southerners, ending the organized emancipation movement in that region. Southern states enacted even harsher laws against slaves instead. Turner's actions also added fuel to the abolitionist movement in the North. Noted abolitionist Williams, William Lloyd Garrison even published an editorial in his newspaper, The Liber Liberator, in support of Turner to some degree. Turner's image has changed and evolved over the years. 
He has emerged as a hero, a religious fanatic, and a villain. Turner became an important icon to the 1960s black power movement as an example of an African American standing up against white oppression. He was also the subject of William Starr Styron's 1967 Pilsner Prize winning novel, Confessions of Nat Turner. But others have objected to Turner's indiscriminate slaughtering of men, women, and children to try to achieve this end. As historian Scott French told the New York Times to accept Nat Turner and place him within the pantheon of American revolutionary heroes is to sanction violence as a means of social change. He has, he has a kind of radical consciousness that to this day troubles advocates of a racially reconciled society. The story lives because it's relevant today to questions of how to organize for change. Tell you what, though, that, that really from reading that and then just seeing, I tell you, it really reminds me of uh, accounts in, in the world where our, our ancients, you know, when they went to war, you know what I mean, and how they rose up. And um, whether he heard it from the spirit of Yah, whatever, you know, the case is, he acted upon it. And um, as you can see, of course, he's not going to be celebrated widely in this country for doing what he did. Hallelujah. But, uh, Nonetheless, it, it, it did take place, and that was a um, that was pretty heroic on his part to do that, and uh, have the guts to do that when many didn't, and many uh, sat back and just allowed you know injustice to take place, and uh, so that's what Pastor was really saying that the guy in when we saw the, the instance in Dallas and how he reacted, and um, it, it was pretty much like a modern day Nat Turner in, in, in his acts. Hallelujah! So just wanted to read that to you. I thought that was very interesting. Um, I had heard about Nat Turner. That wasn't my first time hearing about him. But um, just to get a little bit more information on it was, was uh, I don't know, something else. Glory to the King. But I'll move on. Thanks to the Most High, yeah. Let's see. Wait a minute. Glory, hallelujah. All right. There we go. All right, moving on from there, Saints. I wanted to go into just another uh, tidbit here. What we need to focus on, uh, clearly, hallelujah, bless you all. Um, as we see uh, much chaos going on in the world, you know what I mean, saints? Uh, it's really, truly high time that we uh, prepare ourselves, not just merely hearing. You know, I hear Pastor Dow all the time. I hear Pastor Fox all the time, you know. And I heard Pastor Fox say something to uh, one of his videos. He was saying, you know what, yeah, sure, you can go back in my videos and you can hear me saying, you know what, that we really need to uh, prepare and we really got a sense of urgency, a sense of push, and we need to do it and get it done now. He said, yeah, you can hear that some years ago. But guess what? That's what's going on right now with me. The Most High is pushing me to prepare. And so, saints, we need to be uh, actively preparing. We're hearing... Uh, all these voices crying out to us. You know, and pastor said that I don't know how else to say it. I don't know what other way to say it for us to get ready and get prepared. And and another key thing is, too, for us to get together as a unit, to be mutually assistant, to get together in whatever area that you're in. Join forces and do this together because none of us can uh, do this alone. Hallelujah. But I want to read to you. Look, um, this is from just some preparedness tips. All right. And I just told, chose... Uh, let's see. I just chose from Hallelujah. This is uh I'll tell you what, if you remember, Brother Steve, you remember the title of that um that vid. Post it up there in the chat room so the saints can see that. Cause they yeah, you know, they need to really check it out. You know, folk are not just telling you that just because and you know what? You know what I was watching I was thinking? Yeah. He may have said that some years ago, but how do you know? When do you know what will be that time, though? You know what I'm saying? This could actually be that time. And we don't even think none of it because we're so comfortable and we've heard it so many times before. And so what? You know, we better, we better stop. We better get out of that, 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 that comfort zone. We better get out of that, that mentality. We better do it, and we better do it immediately. Hallelujah. Thanks for posting that, Brother Steve. Brother Steve posted that in... Um, 
And the title is The Perfect Season May Be Ending Soon. Hallelujah. And this is from uh, SHTF, Should Hit the Fan, Preparedness. And this is um, one on one low cost items to barter when shit hit the fan. These are going to be some things that we need to long be able to uh, have, thanks to Most High. And listen up, it says, I will be preaching to the choir if I told you that it was wise to gather extra supplies that you that you can use for bartering in a post-collapsed world. The issue for many, however, is that their budget allows no room for extras. Finding funds for long-term personal preps, let alone daily needs, can be an ongoing challenge. Let's face it, we all know that the middle class is disappearing. Food and health care costs are up and even those with comfortable nest eggs are finding that their funds are rotting, earning virtually no interest and suffering the, the ravages of inflation. And how long has Pastor Dow been preaching that and saying that? How long, saints? So what are we to do? That's the question. The first rule of thumb is to acquire skills that can be bartered for goods. That is the smart thing to do, regardless of your financial situation. Remember when Pastor did that, that series, um, and he was just telling her how, uh, reading an account of a guy who, you know, his skill set uh, was the thing that helped him get by during the time of uh, crisis and collapse. You know what I mean? And that's how he was able to barter, by fixing things and doing things, providing a service. All right? And so it says, the rule of thumb is to acquire skills that can be bartered for good. That is the smart thing to do regardless of your financial situation. Beyond that, there are a number of low-cost items that you can accumulate over time, even if you are poor. All right? Backdoor survival reader, all right, uh, whatever her name, Elaine, sent me her list of poor man's barter items. It, it gave me some many ideas that I expanded the list to include even more items. Here it is. One on one low cost. And I'm not going to read all of them. I'm going to just do the uh, top 25 items, all right, to barter, you know, if, 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 if stuff hit the fan as they have it, all right? So listen up. Say candles is one good thing to have. Garden tools, all right? Fly swatters. Insect spray. Um, they got rat and mouse poison, rodent traps, scissors, all right, do many things with scissors, needles, all right, various types of needles you can do things with, uh, straight pins, safety pins, think of these things, you know, buttons, thread. Now, these are all things we will pretty much overlook, you know. And uh, probably wouldn't think nothing of it, but these are all things that's saying on a low budget you can acquire these things, and these can be things that can be used to barter, possibly for food or other essential needs. Elastic material, dry beans, rice, noodles, flour, spices such as cinnamon, cloves allspice, sage, parsley, etc. So they're talking about spices, different dry spices that you can get. Um, coffee. Coffee is a big one. A lot of people drink coffee. Cooking oil. All right. So a lot can be done with cooking oil. Uh, coffee filters. Pepper. Sugar. Salt. Hand crank or manual can openers, and that's the key. Hallelujah, because we gonna need that. You know, you stocking up all of these canned goods, you gonna need a way to uh, to open them. I find I bought, I got myself like a small one as well as a really large one for the big uh, can. So those are some things. Uh, thanks to Most High, uh, Glory to King. Thanks for posting that too, uh, Brother Ugly, as well as Brother Steve. Bless y'all. Glory to the King. But those are some things we need to keep in mind, Saints, and uh, make sure that we actively prepping. And uh, 
you know, taking uh, heed to the, the warning, um, doing what we can even on a low budget or fixed income or whatever the case is, hallelujah, because we, we can make things happen if we wanted to, glory to the king, hallelujah. Let me see if I have any announcements, man. Um, of course, it's been really hot as of lately, it's one of the hottest years, I mean, weeks that we've had or going to have. So directly water, and make sure it's clean water, thank you, most of y'all. Um, as I said, just prepare. Come together as groups, uh, be mutually assisted, um, and uh, just work together, thanks. Glory to the King. I want to read one more thing. Let me pull it up for you. No, that's not it. Let's see. Give me one second. See if I can get to it right quick. Got so many um, windows up here. Man, I just need to get it. Glory to the King, though. Saints, I pray that y'all are encouraged. We're gonna get to, uh, uh, like I told you, I was gonna get back to the topic at hand. Um, definitely dealing with that mind and changing that mind. Hallelujah. All right, here we go. It was that the whole time. Glory to the King. I want to read this to you on just about, you know, the cleansing of our mind. Of course, spiritually, uh, we got to cleanse our mind, but as well as... Um, in the natural sense as well. And I'm speaking about uh, heavy metals. And this is just a, just a little article that I got. I uh, compiled it and got some information. That it's just seven foods for a healthy metal detox. All right? Just bear with me, thanks. Um, heavy, metal, heavy metals pose a serious risk to our health. Uh, we require some heavy metals such as zinc and copper in trace amounts. Others such as lead, cadmium, uh, arsenic and mercury are absolutely of no use to us. Presence of heavy metals in high amounts in the body can lead to severe health conditions, including heavy metal poisoning, breathing problems, and cancer. Heavy metals enter our body through water, food, skin, and air. In today's toxic environment, it is almost impossible to avoid exposure to them. However, we can easily purge toxic heavy metals from our body by eating foods that promote heavy metal detoxification. Before we look at uh, foods for heavy metal detox, let us discuss why heavy metals are dangerous and specific health risks associated with it, all right? Our body is not able to expel toxic heavy metals quickly as they accumulate at a rate faster than they are removed. Over a period, their level in our body crosses the critical limit. This, is, this in turn can cause various health conditions to manifest. All right, I'm gonna just go right into the different, uh, different foods here. And this is one, man, you know I see Teacher Shane do this all the time, man, and he says he's consistent with it, but garlic. You know, he always has garlic when he's at the table. When we're at the elders' table, always has garlic, always has it to, to go around. But garlic, garlic, garlic. There's so many different other uses for garlic. But it says garlic. According to a study, garlic is an excellent detoxifying agent. In the study, animals with extremely high amounts, high amounts, cadmium, and mercury in their body were administered garlic. The efficiency of garlic in removing heavy in removing me heavy metals was found to be comparable to standard prescription drugs cilantro cilantro also known as coriander or chinese parsley is excellent at removing heavy metals like lead aluminum and mercury from the body according to a report published in the journal of nutritional and environmental science this food may aid in removal of mercury from the central nervous system 
fresh pu- fresh cilantro leaves and cor- and coriander oil are the most effective in purging heavy metals from the body. Foods rich in amino acids. Amino acids are natural uh, chelating agents and as such are beneficial to anyone who has high levels of heavy metals in the body. Vegetarian sources of amino acids include, among others, the following. Corn, uh, whole grains, oatmeal, spinach, carrots, turnips, papayas, plums, grapes, and pomegranates. All right. Another one is sulfur-rich foods. For removal of lead and other heavy metals, health experts recommend sulfur-rich foods such as onions, cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. Also garlic, a very effective chelating agent as as shown, as shown above is also a sulfur rich food. Alright. Glory to the king. So that's just a few. They have a bunch of other ones, man. Burdock root. Um, all types of uh, fruits and vegetables. Fiber present uh, present in various fruits and vegetables. Uh, and extremely effective in uh, helping with this. So uh, uh, some of those are green apples, citrus fruits, cabbage, grapes, beets, and carrots. Hallelujah. So now these are some things we can incorporate. So a lot of these things we should already be consuming anyway. So but this is giving a list of uh, different uh, foods that will help to um, to flush out these heavy metals from our, our bodies. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. We need a clean mind. We need a clean heart. We need our temples, hallelujah, to be clean. Glory to the King. For it is the temple of Yah. Hallelujah. So whatever we can do, saints, whatever information we have to share with one another, we need to do so in that capacity. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to the King. Hope I didn't bore y'all to death. But y'all, y'all still there with me? Uh, let's see. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. But look, saints, as I, as I get out of here, I close up. Um... I want to read one more thing, all right, from Sarah. I'm going to go to the Ecclesiastes and the Apocrypha. Glory to the King. Sarah chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 27. It says, For the fear of Yah is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. Trust not the fear, I'm sorry, distrust not the fear of Yahweh when thou art poor and come not unto him with a double heart. Be not an hypocrite, you hear that saying? Be not a hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so Yah discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation because thou camest not in truth to the fear of Yahweh, but thy heart is full of deceit. And so there's no way, saints, no way we can uh, escape or, or get by uh, the Most High, uh, He knows. He knows everything that's going on with us. He knows it all. You know, our pastor brought it out yesterday in uh, Sabbath. You know how we, you know, we superficially we get up there and we we, we give hugs and handshakes or whatever the case. I love you. But is our heart really in it? Do we really mean it? That's the same way in which we treat the Father. That's the same way in which we treat Him as far as our, our, our devotion, our time with Him. Or you may get up, you may pray, you may read. A couple of verses here and there. But is your heart really in it, though? Is it really? You know what I mean? Is it is your heart really in your devotion? And Yah knows this, saints. And so don't do it just to say, yeah, I, I read my, my word today. I, I, I got it in my book. Oh, yeah, I spent time with the Father. Was your heart really in it? Was your mind totally focused on Him? Did you... Uh, cast off all of those thoughts. Did you really get deep? Did you really go 
as, as, as deep as you could, as you really give all. Yah knows things. He knows all about us. You know what I mean? And so even as you interact with one another, don't be phony, man. Don't be fake. Don't be, com don't be seen as a hypocrite. You know what I mean? Come on. Let's get out of that junk, man, because we're not fooling nobody. That stuff going to be made manifest. It's going to become the light. So that's what we're charged to do, saints, Israel, as, as people of Yah. Hallelujah. You got to realize Yah sees everything. He knows everything. Hallelujah. So um, this walk, this walk is all about overcoming, saints. You hear that? I'll say that again. This entire walk that we're on, this path that we're on, we're going from darkness to light. We're striving to enter in at the straight gate. We're putting off the old man. We should have joy and rejoice in the new things. Hallelujah. The things that bring life. This entire walk is all about overcoming, saints. And we continue to strive. As we go from faith to faith to glory to glory, if you look back, if you've been in this thing a few years, you should be able to look back and see some change in your life. Well, I don't do that no more. This is change. You should be able to. That's going to continue to happen as long as you win this thing. And so you need to continue to fight. You need to continue to war. You need to continue to be on that battlefield. You need to continue to, die, you know, to divest yourself and die out. So all this wicked and perverse this, this polluted mindset, this corrupt mind, die out. Forget being comfortable. Make it your business. Make it your life to be in a state of discomfort. Hallelujah. Join the Messiah in his fellowship of suffering. Learn what that's all about. That's for all of us. That's for all of us, each and every last one of us. Hallelujah. Um. Uh, just a few more things here, saints. I'm going to well. Let me uh, get prepared for you. But but definitely, man, we got to really get it. Let me get it ready for you. All right. It's already ready for us. Glory to the King. I'm going to read a couple more uh, verses, and I got something for y'all to hear. All right. It says Luke 12, 35 through 40. And it says, Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning and and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knock it they may open unto him immediately blessed are those servants whom the master when he cometh shall find watching verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, listen, saints, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come. He would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also. For the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Glory to the King. I want to read one more thing to you, saints, and I have an audio clip I want you to listen to. But Yah is good, saints. He really is good to us. And he's not trying to, you know, that any of us perish. Hallelujah. But he's doing all that he can, saints. And I know he is. All that he can to preserve us. All that he can to preserve us. Make sure you're doing all that you can to receive. Make sure, saints, that you're giving your all. Hallelujah. Purge that wicked mind, that, that old evil nature. Get it out of there, man. Glory to the king. And allow that word to do it. That's what's going to do it. That word is going to wash you. That word is going to purge you. Hallelujah. And it says in the um, 
Once you have recognized the issues in your life, then you can do one or two things. Number one, you can fall back into a comfort zone of denial, or you can step out and deal with them. Thoughts and behaviors can be changed. Psychologists say that it takes weeks or even months to break a habit. So give Yah a little time to work on you. As you renew your mind, he will renew you. When issues come up and check you, when they check you out, your renewed mind will be tested. Will you react the way you have always reacted in the past? Or will the mind of Christ be revealed in your actions? That's a good question. This whole thing, it's all about making Yah's mindset your mindset. You must walk away from those old, instilled habits. You must walk out of old, ungodly ways of thinking and into new, godly ones. Hallelujah. And as it says in Ephesians 4, 23, and it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Glory to the King. Thanks to the Most High. I bless you all. I pray that you all um, are encouraged and you stay encouraged. And more than anything that you do, do, do. You bring about a performance. Be people of action. Showing your faith. Hallelujah. By what you do. And not just merely talking. Not just merely uh, being people that, you know, uh, go through the motions and, and ceremonialism and all of that such thing. But saints be men and women of the Most High God. You be lights. In his wicked and perverse generations, and know for a fact that this walk, you cannot be lazy in it. Hallelujah. That goes for all of us. Hallelujah. Bless the Most High Yah. We bless his holy name. I want y'all to hear this um, uh, excerpt here. It's, this is from this from last year, Saints. When um, this was the time when we were snowed in, and, and Pastor did the, uh, the 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 Sabbath message. He did it from home, and I had this on my heart honestly for two weeks just meditating on it and thinking on these words here. And, and just so happened, I had it last week, but I forgot to, to play it. I mean, it just slipped, completely slipped my mind. However, you know, it came back to my to my mind, and uh, it just so that it's fitting for, you know, uh, what Pastor was just bringing forth on, on yesterday. You know what I mean? And so just to reiterate the same old things over and over. But let us listen to this and let us listen, uh, you know, closely to this. Hallelujah, because y'all is not playing with us, saints. None of us. Glory to the King. Y'all be encouraged. Pray for one another. Continue to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Lift up one another. And um, lift up our pastor and the pastors in Israel and uh, all of your elders and all of your heads of the assembly. You know, one another. All of the the, 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 the widows and the, the fatherless children and, you know, all, all of our uh, mothers that are with child. You know what I mean? All the new Israelites that are born and are coming into this world. Hallelujah. Lift up one another, you know, and uh, be strength and be there for one another as much as possible because this is all we got is each other. The king is coming, saints. Remember, we are trying to make it to the kingdom. Hallelujah. We have no place in this world. Hallelujah. Y'all be encouraged, saints, and most high y'all. king is coming. Bless y'all. I had to have my mind renewed. And, and I'm a Paul, a little bit Paul. For all you people out there who say that you are Hebrew Israelites, you say you're Israelites, how is it that you can be an Israelite and read the same word that I am reading and yet and still keep the same mindset of the world? When I see you physically, even your outward adornment, you look just like the world. You act like the world, you talk like the world. Your thoughts are the world. Your conversation is the world. You ain't been transformed. No, you ain't. You can receive the Holy Spirit and still refuse to be transformed. Only thing the Holy Spirit does is make you willing. It compels you to want to be obedient. But your old man, your old flesh, he's going to fight against you being obedient. 
I'm telling you, there is nothing in this world that's trying to keep you or trying to trying to make sure that you have a nice bed of rose while you change your mind to a kingdom mindset. No, it ain't either. Uh-uh. But some of you, I, I cannot tell the difference between you and the world. And I have a problem with that. The most high is a problem with it. Because the indictment here is to be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's the only way. When your mind is renewed, that's the only way that you may prove. That you may prove. That you may prove. That you may prove. What is good? You know, that you may prove. And well pleasing and perfect desire, not you, a but of Elohim. You're right. Is your desire to a Elohim wise? I'm going to ask you a question, wise. Listen to me. Is your desire to your husband? That's what the book says. And the Bible says that he shall rule over thee. Wow, we may be equal concerning the salvation. We do have different roles to play and different roles to perform in his life. And the Bible says, hey, husband, love your wife. Even as the Messiah loved the assembly, and he gave himself for it. And then he says, husband, don't be bitter against them. You know the reason why he says that? Because they're going to do things to make you bitter. Yeah, they are. They will step out from under your covering in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat and give place to the devil. Yeah, they will too. And you have got to use wisdom knowledge. Sometimes you have to use wisdom with compassion. Sometimes you got to bring the hammer. You're going to find out who they really truly love. But the truth is, why? I need to ask you a question. Is your desire to your husband, that's what the Torah says it should be, and it says that he shall rule over thee. Do you allow him to rule over you, or do you still function out your own mindset? Good question, isn't it? Because if you are a wife, your sole purpose of life is to live in servitude of your husband. And that is the only way you can please Yahweh. If you have a Yah-fearing man, you cannot please Yahweh no other way, woman, unless you are submitting to him and doing your role the way that the book says. Husband, you can't please Yahweh if you are abusing your wife. You are out of Torah, out of order, and you will be judged by the law. You messed up. You got duties to perform. And that's just the truth. Ain't nobody getting by. And the reason why most of you can't function right because you refuse to change your Gentile influence mindset. And you're not going into the kingdom. We are here to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Period. Why? You don't own your husband. Your husband, he is the one. If I can say this word and be pure, he the one that owns you. Do you understand that? And the law puts down laws, prohibitions. The law does. Restrictions to teach the men how you ought to treat your wives. And so when, and that's part of the problem in this society right here. When you got wives going, my husband, whoa, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. You got it wrong. And that's probably the reason why you back talk. It's probably the reason why you dishonor. It's probably the reason why you cut a food and act a fool and stuff. But know this. Whatever you do to your husband, you do it to the Messiah. You need to know that, wife. Now, men, contrast everything that I'm saying. You listen to me, men. Contrast everything I'm saying. Because, see, we are the assembly. And we, as the assembly, the same way that we expect for our wives to behave, we better make sure we're behaving that way towards the Messiah. You better make sure you're submitted. You better make sure you are obedient. You better make sure you are guarding your heart and you are obeying his commands, his laws and his statutes, his rules and guidelines. You ain't getting by. How is it that you can require more of your wife and you, you can't even produce it yourself? A lot of wives, they know a hypocrite when they see one. But that doesn't mean why, because you see a hypocrite and you begin to, to act in hypocrisy yourself because you don't want to put your own soul in jeopardy. And many of you, when you're so weak in mind, you're the weaker vessel, 
Who's to say you're ever going to recover? Nobody is ever guaranteed, not Pastor Donald, nobody in this world is guaranteed that if you step outside of the umbrella of the protection of the Almighty, that you're ever going to be recovered and come right back under his protection again. Because if you step outside under his protection and stuff, you have entered into the dragon. That's exactly what you've done. And it would be wise for you to stay under the banner and the protection of the Almighty. That, yes, it would, too. And wife, don't you ever step out under the protection of your husband's husband. Don't you ever step out under the umbrella of protection of the Messiah. If you do that, you do that to your own apparel. And most people have gotten arrogant. Most people are serious. They have gotten really raw. And they thought that they were really truly a man or woman, only to end up losing. I've I sit and watched so many people. And I'm going to say this again. It's in all of us. Y'all can bring good things to us and put good things in front of us. And most of us, we act like a bunch of spoiled Americans. Yeah, we do. You know why? Because we refuse to change his mind. Most of us, we have good husbands. We have good wives. Yes, we do. And most husbands abuse their wives. Most wives are abusing their husbands. It's sad. And you know what? The day of reckoning is coming. It may not be today. May not be next week, may not be six months, but your day of reckoning is coming. Yes, it is too. Because you think about this for a moment. Most people who are arrogant and opinionated and full of themselves, they always thought because of their husband and wife having the strength to fear Yah and keep his commandment and do that which is right, they never, ever, ever thought that what they had, they were going to lose it. No, they didn't. They always thought it was going to be there. They always thought it was going to be there. They never have ever thought that it was going to be gone. You know what you better start doing? You better start counting your blessings. And men, you think the Messiah is always going to be there putting up with your treachery, putting up with your rebellion, putting up with your, your sorry excuses and stuff and making excuses of being a sluggard and lazy and passive and stuff. Here's what you thought. Your lack of leadership, your lack of discipline, your, your lack of authority. You thought that the Messiah is going to continue to keep putting up with it. It ain't too long before he's going to turn you over to a reprobate mind. And not only that, he's going to strip you of what you thought you had. Most of you are so arrogant in your mind. You never thought that your wife will step out on you, now she's gone. You never thought that your husband will step out on you, and now he's gone. Because you know the reason why? You know the reason why? You will not change your mind. And now that this truth of this Torah is coming, especially by the lips of this pastor right here, a lot of people are getting freedom. Because you know why? Yah exalts his peace above all things, because he is the Prince of Peace. And God does not want any Israelite in any chaotic situation. No, he don't. He wants peace. That's what he wants. And some of you, sad to say, will never experience peace until you make changes in your life. Just like you had to change from serving Satan to serve God, a lot of you got to get rid of the devils that is in your house in order for you to have peace. That's just the truth. That's just the truth. And I know that I'm tearing down a lot of your sacred cows and a, and a lot of the things that you thought that you had concreted in. You thought that, 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 that these people that you live every day in your life to abuse and will not perform your role to the uttermost. It's clearly laid out here because your role is laid out in the Bible. Right. Your role is laid out in the Scriptures. Yes, it is too. And you thought. That, that the husband was always going to be long suffering. Let me tell you something. There comes a time when his mercy runs out, just like Yahweh's mercy ran out on Israel. Yes, he did too. You know, his mercy endured forever. Hallelujah. To those who love him and keep his commandments. But his mercy does have limits. And we being human beings, we ain't that. Okay? We are not God. And our limits are nowhere near, nowhere near to the capacity of y'all. So most of you, you better count your blessings. You better count them one by one. You better. Some of you, you're sitting here spying on our liberty. Listen, you never thought that you would be put out of this ministry and look like you now. You are outside of the cap. Yes, you are too. Out of it. Because you're foolish, you're prideful, and you're arrogant. You thought. That somewhere, somehow, you were going to slip right on in and slither in 
and try to bring some type of effective change and stuff with your false, phony Jewish, Israeli doctrines. You thought you were going to be able to come in and get a position in place because you refuse to change your mind. You have the same mindset in the world, manipulating folks, dogging folks, taking advantage of folks, and you never thought it was going to take place here and now. And then your sin found you out, and now you're without the camp. And I'm going to tell you right now, most of you ain't never coming back to this town. No, there's 12 tribes in Israel, and we're just one of them. You're going to take your ass on to some of another tribe. We finished with you. We're done with you. Hallelujah. You can still be in Israel, but go to another town. You ain't coming over here and frustrated to serve this work. We have given you a chance. And you have messed up many opportunities, and we're not going to be a fool. No, we ain't either. Uh-uh. Oh, we'll put a word in for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, all right. hey, hey, Benjamin, if you accept, we you go over here, okay? Just, hey, Benjamin, I'm going to tell you about these people. You accept them in, this is what you got to be forewarned of. This one loves slandering. This one loves gossiping. Oh, they, every once in a while, they have um, what you would call good moments, where they have a heightened sense of awareness, and they come to themselves, and they do good for a short period of time. And then the devil speaks in their ear, and they're right back in it again. This is what you got to deal with. Oh, they want to repent. Just for a short period of time, and then next thing you know, they're poisoning somebody else with their slander. They're poisoning somebody else with their deceit. And it seems like every false brother that comes around, they join up to them. They're their best buddy, chums, and pals, and yet still they can't see it's a reflection of their character, but that's who the people they are. Do you think that Benjamin is going to want to give you a chance to come in that camp with that type of report? Woo! Mm. Man, man, man. Look at the devil, and the devil is a lie. Boy, the people are fired up in the chat room. Man, I'm getting hallelujahs and tens and glories and everything else and, 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 and kill the devil. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're going to be tearing down Satan's kingdom. I promise you, the only way you can tear it down is truth. Hallelujah is truth. Glory to the king. All right. Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Huh? So do you mean... Uh-oh, look at him looking. <laughs>